can just think of it as the general effect of frequency from our data set, that that effect is maybe slightly positive on average, but it's also very much compatible with negligible effects. The effects of frequency just weren't all that strong. So let's break down what we are looking at here. So this is, again, our primary meta regression looking at the independent effects of frequency in that fractional quantification method and its effects on changes in muscle size. So let's uh, focus on panel A here to start. So that's on the left-hand side here. If you think back to the effects of volume, we saw a stronger dose response relationship just visually, right? Um, we saw that as you go from zero sets per week up to 10 sets, 20 sets, etc., you see that it generally goes up. In this case, if you just look at that middle line there, right, that, that solid line that starts at zero, zero, you see that it goes up a bit, basically from zero to one, which makes sense because you're going from the control adjustment effect at zero, at a frequency of zero. And then from one to two, maybe it goes up a bit. And then from two and beyond, we more or less see this functional plateau. So ultimately, what we see here is not a super strong effect, but let's add a little bit of color to that. So the way that you kind of put some numbers on a meta regression like this is to look at the slope of the relationship. Specifically, in this case, for a nonlinear um, dose response relationship, what we did is we looked at the marginal slope, so the marginal linear slope at the average frequency. Okay, the average frequency was right around two sessions per week. So if you were to to basically uh, say, hey, what is the linear slope um, at about two sessions per week? That is basically what you see in panel B. Okay. So that linear slope is 0.32% for each additional session, okay? So you might say, oh, there is a positive effect of frequency. And I would say, yeah, that's the way it slightly leans, is a, uh, a slight positive effect for additional frequency at our average frequency of about two sessions per week. However, you also need to consider the uncertainty around that marginal slope. And that is basically the width of the diamond here. And you can see that the width of the diamond on the right-hand side crosses over zero, okay? So the credible interval spanned from a negative 0.14% all the way to 0.82%. So therefore, our results indicate that the, you can just think of it as the general effect of frequency from our data set, that that effect is maybe slightly positive on average, but it's also very much compatible with negligible effects. And just for completeness sake, the best fit um, model approach here that uh, is presented in panel A is what's called a reciprocal model best fit. Um, and again, that basically indicates to us very strong diminishing returns, and those diminishing returns happen quite quickly. So that is a general overview of our primary meta regression for the effects of frequency on hypertrophy. Uh, but I'll pause here and see what other color you think is worth adding. Yeah, I, I think uh, for the most part, I did a, a, re a really good job. I think you can just and I like what you did in terms of kind of visually talking about it in comparison to the volume one. I think that helps people kind of understand. Because if you just saw this plot in isolation, I think the the interpretation of it might have been substantially different. Like um, in terms of, again, going back to kind of the frame of reference, I think this is just like something I want to hammer home is like, again, when we do these kind of projects and these bigger meta analytic approaches that are supposed to give us as much statistical power as humanly possible. It's not to say we have a lot in an absolute sense, still a few number of studies, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of variability that's unrelated to the training effects, et cetera. So, you know, grand scheme of things, these aren't the most powered analyses in the world relative to other fields, but it's basically the best we can possibly do. And if we are trying to do that and we don't see a consistently identifiable effect, that should probably give you some pause in terms of, okay, what I'm, I'm not going to run with a directional leaning in this case. Now that said, there's still part of me that's a practitioner that needs to know from like a directional um, intervention approach if I'm going to you know work with a client which way am I going to kind of hedge my bets and I think that's ultimately what we try to do here is appeal to both of those approaches both in kind of what we reported with kind of some of the probabilities of you know I, I, I saw um, some of the the super cool hot takes within six hours of the um, you know the preprint being posted Th those numbers I think 
one of the reasons we want the Bayesian framework is because it gives you access to those probabilities that I think are extremely intuitive. And I think that I noticed people were hinging on those quite a bit and, and use a lot using using that as kind of positive evidence, which I found interesting. But that's kind of the, the point here is that if you're doing things kind of quote unquote by the book um, from a scientific perspective, you're probably saying, hey, this slope is at least compatible with a negative slope. Hey, that probably shouldn't be something I should treat as a super serious effect. But if you're interpreting kind of the entire posterior distribution here, the majority of it is on the positive side of zero. So my best guess is it's probably compatible with a small positive effect of frequency. And that's just kind of that balance um, that you have to you have to weigh when you're kind of deciding which way you want to kind of um, intervene in terms of a practical sense. So it's it's an interesting, I'm, I'm always just interested to see how people take things like this, which are very much somewhat ambiguous in terms of how they will be interpreted and kind of see where people run with it. And it's, it's just an interesting um, thing, particularly in this case, where I think people have some pretty strong anecdotes kind of coming into the conversation. So it's a, it's a, it's a cool one.